Hey guys, what's going on? We're going to be doing a quick review of both the JP and Global Side. We had Global Side data download and we have the LR Android 17 and 18 legendary campaign that's running on the JP side. This is going to be a really short video. I'm just going to talk about the global stuff. There's no banner information as of yet that's going to come out tonight. I will possibly be on a live stream tonight because the banner information was released or because we want to know what the banner information is. I don't think I'm going to summon on it because I know a lot of you asked me last night on last night's live stream. I am probably not going to be summoning on this banner. But uh, I will at least do a review and probably possibly do some gameplay uh, of the actual event when it comes around because, you know, I might as well just grind it out. Anyway, so let's go ahead and jump into it. We have the global data download. Shout out to Zahal on the Reddit. Go ahead, make sure you follow the Reddit. Go ahead, create an account and follow over here uh, for Dokkan Battle. Dokkan Battle Reddit has a whole bunch of awesome information. This is where I get all my information from. Also, shout out to dbz.space. Make sure to go over here. You could even create an account if you want. There's a whole bunch of information. We have scheduled information of new cards that are going to be released. As you see over here underneath the schedule section, we have a list of all the units that you want, categories, drops, anything you want, dbz.space has it. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and talk about a global data download. We have the new cards coming. We have the new Ultimate Gohan, the Strength Ultimate Gohan. We all knew that was coming. That is the Hybrid Saiyan Leader. Very awesome card. We're going to talk about him and the rest of them in a minute. We're getting new physical boot tanks, the Ultimate Gohan Tech SR. So that means he's going to be semi-farmable. That means he has a higher rate of drop. If it's semi-farmable, it means he is summonable, but he has a high summon rate because he's an SR. When you Z-Awaken him to an SSR, he has a 50% chance of increasing the super attack of any Ultimate Gohan. Obviously, I'm going to recommend to do the Strength one first. First, if you have him, uh, then the intelligence one would come after that. Uh, that's just my opinion on it, though, so take it for what you will. We are also getting the Super Saiyan 2 Physical Gohan Rebirth, the Android 18 New Year Login Bonus. We're getting the Super Vegito Rebirth and the Intelligence Super Saiyan Event Trunks Rebirth. So that Super Saiyan Trunks from his event is getting his second Dokken Awakening, which is really awesome because he becomes a really viable uh, free-to-play unit. We're also getting some new missions, various new Supreme Kai missions, rewards, the Supreme Kai Stone and Earring Medals. Starts on the 31st at login. So that's going to be this weekend, guys. Uh, that's, what, four days from now? 31st is on Sunday. So on Sunday, we can go ahead and we can start grinding out the medals to Dokken Awaken in that base form SSR Vegito. Though I would probably recommend all of you to wait to Dokken Awaken him until we actually get the event. Once the event comes in, you could increase the super attack to 10, then I would recommend Dokken Awaken him. So if you guys have the patience, wait. Otherwise, grind out some uh, reverse Dokken medals and you can reverse Dokken him when the time comes. Uh, number two, fight for the future. The last Super Warriors begins on 1-1. I believe that is the Trunks event or the event that has the Trunks that's farmable. And number three, various missions for the New Year campaign. Clearing 30 stages between 1231 and 117 awards 11 Dragon Stones, one Elder, uh, one Elder Kai, uh, some orbs, and Hercule statues. Daily quest to spend 18 stamina for one stone during the same time period. So it's a daily quest for one stone. Um, that's for about 17 days. So that's 17 additional Dragon Stones plus the 11. So you're getting some Dragon Stones for summons and stuff like that. That's going to be pretty damn cool. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the new units. Um, this is just the, the base SR Gohan that I told you is semi-farmable. We're not going to go over everything. We're just going to talk about a little bit. He is a hybrid Saiyan category leader. Uh, just HP and attack plus 20%. Not that great, but if you're trying to run a hybrid Saiyan team, I guess he can come in handy. Um, he has Super Kamehameha, raises attack and causes extreme damage to the enemy. Honestly, you're probably going to be better off with like running a Vegito Blue or something like that for the leader for a hybrid Saiyan team since they're all, most of them, are, are super units. I think there's a couple extreme units and that's from like the Baby Saga stuff, but that's about it. Um, super attack, Super Kamehameha raises attack and causes extreme damage to the enemy. Uh, now, mind you, I, well, actually this one, I don't know if this is a Kaioken effect. That's interesting um, for the base SS, well, the SR variant. I don't know if it's a Kaioken effect. That would be pretty cool for an SR to have the Kaioken effect. Uh, passive skill attack and defense plus 40% when key is 10 or more. So he's giving himself attack and defense buff when he launches a super attack, essentially. Um, all in the family. I mean, yes, I do understand the 11 key is not a super. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, link skills all in the family. Saiyan lineage, infighter, Kamehameha, shocking speed, power, bestowed by God. Not that great of link skills, but he's free to play. Honestly, you can get him to super attack 10 if you would like to. I would recommend Z awakening them and feeding them into the STR ultimate Gohan to increase his super attack. Um, this is gonna, we're only going to go over the TURs, by the way. I'm not going to go over every single one because it's a pain in the butt to do so. This is the TUR Gohan. I'll do a full review in the future of him with a, with a whole team building guide. I know I did one on the JP side, but I'm going to do one again because it's always helpful to do that. Um, hybrid Saiyans category, key plus 3, HP and defense, plus 170%, attack plus 130%. Kind of stinks that attack is a little bit lower, but uh, whatever, it's still cool. Um, burst Rush. Raises attack and causes immense damage to the enemies. Uh, this is a Kaioken effect, I believe. I'm pretty sure that one is the Kaioken effect. 
Uh, passive skill, signs of brilliance. Attack plus 120%, medium chance to guard against all attacks. Defense plus 50% for all super type allies. So he's a very good unit overall. Uh, I do like that. The, fit, the medium chance to guard, I don't know what the actual percentage is. I'm pretty sure that's like a 40% chance or something like that. Um, but I don't know the actual number. It's just cool because he does get to guard. Uh, honestly, though, I, I'm going to tell you this. For, for this team, if you have the optimal team, optimal meaning like the best units that you could possibly have in game with the most damage output to beat the events the quickest is going to be LR Gohan, LR Trunks. Now, I know not a lot of you have it, so please, for those of you who are, who are going to start yelling that, oh, not everyone has those units. Yes, I understand no one that not everyone has those units. I don't personally think that, that, that this team... <sighs> Knowing that the Super Saiyan 3 Bardock is coming out, and that, that's my big thing. Like, that's what I like. I'm waiting for him. I don't think I'm going to pull on this banner because I don't think this is worth it. I think this Gohan's cool and everything. But if you if you don't have the LRs, and we don't have Trunks out yet, so if you don't have LR Gohan, I personally don't think this team's uh, going to be as viable as it could be. Uh, just because I feel like there are other teams that are going to be a lot more viable until you get those other LRs. Regardless, the, the Super Saiyan 3 Bardock is also really cool because you can run LR Gohan and Gogeta because he does he does have the Super Intelligence leader buff, which is like 90%, HP attack and defense plus 90%, so it's not too far off. But uh, anyway, all in the family, the same lineage, Infighter, Z Fighter, Shocking Speed, Power Bestow they got, and Fierce Battle, so again, kind of whack link skills. He's not going to be good for a mono strength team, but you can run him if you want to. I, feel, I just feel like there's better units that you can run. Um, and with the most uh, optimal team, you're probably not going to have him on primary rotation. I, I was super hyped for him until the Super Saiyan 3 Bardock came out, so I'm sorry if I'm like dampening it for anyone who's actually really happy about him. Personally, I don't think I'm going to be pulling for him. Um, unless there's like some type of special going on, maybe I'll do the special summons. This is the Dokkan variant of the new Majin Buu. He's physical type key plus 3 HP and attack plus 70%. He does supreme damage to the enemy and seals super attacks. He's the Gotenks Absorb Majin Buu, by the way. Um, so he has passive skill, evils, territory, super type, enemies, defense minus 50%, attack plus 100%. So he's not horrible. He's pretty cool for a mono extreme team. There are a lot of there's a lot of boos for the mono physical extreme team. You have fat boo, you have kid boo, you have super nude boo. Now you have boo, uh, boo tanks, uh, and that's what four units I just mentioned there that are all boos. And then you have to have the two omegas. So you're just one off. And um, I'm pretty sure I think the there there's well, I guess you could do the physical evil boo. You know, the, the one that looks really dark and skinny and tall. Uh, I guess you could technically throw him on there just to make a full boo team if you wanted to, but you don't need to. But I was saying, now that this completes majority of the mono physical for that, uh, it's cool because he has Metamorphosis, Kamehameha, Majin, Over in a Flash, Fierce Battle, Nightmare, and Wall Standing Tall. Pretty cool for a Majin boo oriented team if you want to. Um, but overall, he's a decent unit for because of the amount of damage output that he can do with attack plus 100%. And you always got to love those. Uh, the other one's going to be the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Teen. This is his Dokkan variant. I'm pretty sure his base form is going to be available on the banner as well because of this. Um, I believe he was, yeah, he was available on the JP side as well. Uh, he now Dokkan Awakens to all types, key plus 3, HP, and attack plus 40%, which is actually pretty cool. Those are the two uh, stats that you want to have buffed if you can only choose to. Um, super attack, super Kamehameha, greatly raises attack for one turn, causes supreme damage to the enemy. Uh, blazing morale, all allies attack and defense plus 35%. So not only is he a decent hitter, he gives everybody an attack and defense buff. For a mono physical team, he's a pretty cool support unit, so I would recommend getting him Dokken Awaken. Um, if you don't already have him, then maybe you might want to consider summoning on the banner because he's a cool unit to have. He has Link Skills, Golden Warrior, Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan Z Fighter, Kamehameha, Shocking Speed, and Shattering the Limit. Um, unfortunately, no Fierce Battle here, but you can't really do anything about that. Overall, good unit, unit solid support. Um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be him and this Boo, this Ultimate Gohan, and this other Ultimate Gohan, the SR variant, that are gonna be on the banner. Um, so we're gonna have to wait to see what uh, what else they put in. If they have anything good, I might consider summoning on it. But uh, personally, I don't want to. I don't need the Boo. I already have the Gohan, and if it's just for this Ultimate Gohan, unless I get LR Trunks, I don't think I'll summon for it. We also have the free login bonus for this really seductive-looking Android 18. Her leader ability is all types of attack and defense plus 30%, kind of whack. Destructo Disc, Supreme Damage to the Enemy, which is pretty cool. Her passive skill, Shades of the New Year, all allies key plus 1, attack and defense plus 20%, and attack plus 8% for key orb obtained. So she's a decent support unit for those of you who don't have any support units, because, I mean, key plus 1, attack and defense plus 20%, that's not the best in-game, but it's, I mean, hell, it's pretty cool, and because it's all allies, it's like, there's no restrictions there. You can just throw her there, and everyone's getting, you know, support from her. She's really good for an Android team. Unfortunately, she is a super unit, so she's not going to fit on an extreme team. But she does have link skills, the Innocence, Twin Terrors, Android Assault, Battlefield Diva, Organic, Upgrade, and Infinite Energy. So maybe at some point in the game in the future, there'll be something better. I know when Android 17 comes out, the MIR version, he will be like a super unit, so that might benefit a little bit. But we need more super androids in order for this to be beneficial. 
We're also getting this Doken Awakening of this Vegeta. Uh, this is the Agility Vegeta, so he's going Super Vegeta, uh, I guess, too. <laughs> uh, this is really his Doken form. His Super Attack is Final Flash, causes Supreme Damage to the enemy, and raises Attack for 9 turns. So this is actually going to make him a little bit more viable, because he was pretty damn whack before. Passive Skill, brought uh, to, uh, Power Brought to Bear. Agility, Strength, and Physical Type, Key plus 2, Attack and Defense plus 25%, and Weakens Regeneration. So now he became a pretty damn cool support unit. Unfortunately, that 9 term in Attack, unless you're keeping him on Primary Rotation, you're probably never going to get there. Um, so, I mean, that's I guess that's cool, but whatever. Throw him on Primary Rotation if you want to. He's more of a support unit at this point for Mono, uh, Agility, Super Team. Uh, but there's definitely better units you could run for support. But he's cool because he does have the basic Super Saiyan, or yeah, the basic Saiyan, Super Saiyan Link skills. Golden Warrior, Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan Prodigies, Z Fighters, Soul vs. Soul, and Shattering the Limit. Overall, pretty solid support unit for a Mono Agility team. Uh, you can throw him on other teams if you like to on a couple different Super Teams, but just remember, his, he's restricted to Agility, Strength, and Physical, so there's no Technique or Intelligence there for him to support uh, so I mean take that for what you will he's uh, he was a really wacky unit before now he's at least gotten some type of use uh, again that nine attack turn the buff kind of stinks well I mean it's cool because it's so long but by the time you actually get him to be a decent hitter it's not going to really be worth it <laughs> unless you don't have any good units uh, this is the last trunks this is the one that's finally getting his Doken awakening from the event um, he is a really cool free-to-play unit. Now, mind you, he is free-to-play. You need to Doken Awaken him from, like, the intelligence base form trunks that finally gets his, uh, you know, transforms for the first time into Super Saiyan. Then he Doken Awakens again into this guy. Um, intelligence type, HP attack, and defense plus 70%. So he's a pretty cool leader for taking on. If you go up against, like, LR Goku for a stat buff, I guess he would be cool for you. It's still not going to be great because you can't get any, like, super attacks off or anything like that if you don't have the key, the, the key boss from leader. But he's cool for a mono intelligence leader if without the key uh, if you don't have any. Super attack is Heat Dome attack causes supreme damage to the enemy, so he's a free-to-play that now has supreme damage to the enemy. Uh, peace for the future, attack plus 70% when facing two or fewer enemies. So that's almost all the time, so he's going to be very viable because he does that attack plus 70%. He has Golden Warrior, Saiyan Lineage, Super Saiyan, Royal Lineage, Prepared for Battle, Dismal Future, and Fierce Battle. Overall, he has a really nice Link skill set for a free-to-play unit. Um, honestly, I'm definitely going to be getting him. I already have him up at Super Attack 10. Um, I'm debating on whether I want to get all four Dupads unlocked of him just for the hell of it. Because you never know, you can get another Doken Awakening. He could be the Trunks version of that Goku that's gotten like seven Doken Awakening. Overall, really nice setup. I'm uh, pretty sure that's everything that I want to discuss here. Uh, yeah, because we went over all of these guys. So let's go ahead, head over onto the JP side and talk about there. We have the Legendary Campaign for LR Android 17 and 18. Um, it looks it looks like it's going to work a little bit different than the LR Goku campaign. All rewards come as you complete them. Um, not at the end of the campaign, so as you complete them. Login bonus. As soon as you log in between the 28th of December to January 29th, you get one Android 17 and 18. Missions. Dates. December 28th to the 20th, January 28th. Clear any Doken event one time. 1 through 5, you get um, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you get 14 Android 17 and 18s plus the one from the login, which is 15. Um, so you get 15 total of them, so you just need to have a couple others. I guess that, I guess that's what, because if you get 15, I guess you need 6, 7 more? So, 6 more. Yeah, I think you would need 6 more of them um, for the for the base, and then, yeah, you would need one for the base, then 4 Dupaz unlock, or maybe the 23, either way. Um, you need a couple of them to start out with. Once you Doken Wake them, Doken Wake them to LR, you get 17 Dragonstone, 17 Team Cost Expansion, which is really cool that they're doing that for a Team Cost Expansion. One silver Hercule statue, seven bronze Hercule statue, so that's pretty decent. 17 Dragonstones just to get them to, to LR, and then 17 team costs is awesome. If you already have it, do, by the way, guys, you automatically get it as soon as the event starts. So just log in and you collect, can collect everything. Uh, make Android L, well, make LR Android 17 and 18 Super Tech 20. You get 18 Dragonstones, 18 team cost expansion, one platinum Hercule statue, eight gold Hercule statues, and 10 Elder Kai's. So for those of you who did the full grind, I hope this comes to the global because I already got mine Super Tech 20 with all four Dupaz unlocked. With some dupe system, I just need to finish it out if that happens. And when you 100% them in the dupe system, you get all the orbs back. So that's pretty freaking awesome. Uh, those that have achieved these missions before the start of the campaign will have those sent as soon as the campaign starts. So that's awesome. I know I said that before. I'm just reading through the Reddit post. You'll be able to claim your rewards right away. Word it makes it sound like they might be done in waves. Thus, there might be cases where missions will not be set to complete it right away by some people. So if you don't have it as soon as the event starts, guys, do not start like freaking out saying oh oh they screwed up they screwed up no they might come out in waves they can't handle the amount of processing power the amount of people that are playing the game 
All right, so they're probably going to have to do it in ways which does make complete sense. We're also getting select Doken Fest open that are going to be daily open. I'm um, assuming these are yeah, these are the ones that are going to be required to Doken Awaken them. So from the tw December 28th on, you have the Broly Cell, Kid Buu, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, and Gogeta events open. Starting on the 30th of December, you have Janemba, Full Power Frieza, Ultimate Gohan, Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, and Beerus. And starting January 1st, you have Super Vegito, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku, Puhan, and Golden Frieza. So you have all of them available that are going to be available so that way you can get the Androids Doken Awaken 2 LR. It's going to be a grind fest, guys. I don't plan on doing it myself, but it's going to be there available for you. Uh, the Agility Potential stage will also be open daily. So for those of you who want to get the Agility Orbs, make sure you go in and grind it out every day. Dates are between December 28th to January 28th. Uh, so make sure you go ahead and do that. The Agility Potential stage will be open daily in the campaign period. You can play the, one st the stage one time per day. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and check that out. That's going to be pretty awesome. Also, real quick, we do have new phases. So thank you to Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Gofu. Um, <laughs> uh, then we have the Ultimate Gohan. Now it's time. The other Ultimate Gohans. Leave that guy to me. Guess it's time to get serious. I guess these two are the strength ones. This is the, the technique one that I went over. This is the boo before he dokens. <laughs> this is after he dokens. What's the matter? Try harder. All you you got all week. And then you have the doken version of the Gohan, which is huh? Is it over already? So that's pretty cool. And then we have this seductive 18. Jeez, well, what else can you do? <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be a surprise in a good way or if it's supposed to be like a surprise in like a bad way. <laughs> Either way, uh, that's pretty cool. We have all that information. This stuff will be released over the next few days, guys. So we have about four more days before everything's actually out. So, you know, stay patient. Don't worry. Things are going to come global side. I think, you know, I really hope we get the LR Android stuff. But we have the ultimate go on coming so for those of you who've been waiting for him go ahead and pull on it i'm going to do a full banner review when it gets when it actually drops personally if you want my own opinion on it i think it's worth waiting for additional banners unless you actually want all the units that are going to be on the banner but outside of that guys thank you for joining me here today make sure to subscribe if you're new i'll probably be jumping on live stream tonight once the banner goes live so i could do a live reaction to it uh, outside of that you'll have a good one and i'll catch you all later peace